Hello everyone, my name is RunitX, and today I'm finally bringing you the Ryu Guide. Sorry for the wait. So, let's go ahead and get it right into it by talking about the differences between Ryu and Ken, mostly whenever it comes to the, his, their neutrals. So, as Ken, as you guys have seen with my Ken Guide, Ken is a little more aggressive with how he approaches, whereas Ryu is more of a turtley, like, zoner, boxer-esque character. His overall goal in neutral is to space you out through, like, you know, spacing with light forward tilt, hard down tilt, roundhouse, just kind of, like, similar to Ken. But what really makes it different is his Shokunetsu fire line. So, Shokunetsu was one of the one of the moves that I previously talked about in my videos that got buffed. It comes out 8 frame faster than it did pre-patch. Um, the slower one's slower, and the faster one's faster. And it actually does a good, beefy amount of percent by itself. I mean, it does 14% by itself. And it can combo into itself as well which um, I'll get into a little bit later. So, a lot of what Ryu's neutral is, is a lot of Shokunetsu uh, Hover, which is this move right here. You can use it as an approach um, to kind of just get your way in. You can also pair this. Instead of that, you can also go with Hard Down Tilt as well, which you can actually combo into on Shield or on Hit, as you saw there. Same thing with Shaku Hover, the Life Forward Tilt. And shock, the slow Shaku Hover has, like, legit can combo into anything. Like, combos into Nair, Combos into falling up air. I mean, just literally shocking at slow shocking at you like combos into imagination. But the thing is, was what makes this so good is it can is is Shokunetsu is such a good conditioning tool, and it's something you can use to approach. So if you even throw a ground to slow shock you and your opponent is to jump over it, or you condition the jump over it, you can slap him out of the air with roundhouse. You can jump up and throw another one high on hit or on block just to kind of keep them you know keep them on their toes of what you're going to do and you just slowly start conditioning with this, this projectile to make them do what you want them to do because if they tank it look how much shield damage Shokunetsu does they can't really sit and hold shield for long against this move because it'll either shield break or shield poke and as we said the damage is good so it makes it to where you can efficiently zone with this character but in reality, like, you know, people can always jump over it. They can find their openings if you're too linear with your fireball game. So, fireball management is a big part of this character. So, something I like to do to start off the game is I'll throw out a Shokunetsu or something like that, and I'll see how my opponent deals with it. Whether they shield, I pivot cancel in, and I light forward tilt, hard down tilt, as I showed you guys before. If they tend to jump over it, something I like to do is I'll short uh, Shaku hover, and then I'll preemptively approach with it and I'll short hop up air and as we've talked about before in previous guides as well um, Ryu's up air has iframes as you can see there his arm is invincible and the, and the hitbox stays out longer due to the recent patch that was one of the big buffs that came to the character so you end up building this wall and slowly start boxing your component in the corner and then he starts le uh, like ledge trapping which is what I'm going to be going into next so from like 50 or so so I'm going to down smash I'm sure you guys what I'm talking about so, like, immediately afterwards, you can, as soon as they grab a ledge, you can throw out a slow shock through like this. If you grab a ledge again, throw it again. Dash forward, if you, um, like, to cover, like, um, get up attack or something like that. But mostly what you want to do is you want to stand at this distance, and then after you knock them off stage, as soon as they grab a ledge, you can throw out small baits, like dash forward, dash back, or dash down tilt, dash back, or dash forward down tilt jump rising there focus if they if you know they're going to like um, they have like a move off the ledge like we've seen a fair or something like that um, and just kind of like put all this pressure to make them do something but honestly like if they pick something preemptive to catch you they can get a reversal and they can like just push you back so you don't want to be you want to be careful with how you bait like I like to throw out my baits right when they grab the ledge because a lot of times it um, makes them want to pick something preemptively and I can just kind of cover that from this distance from this distance if you wait you can react to neutral get up, get up attack from dash forward. Like as soon as you see them, them start the animation to go into it, you can dash forward, start down tilting them. If they roll, you're at roll distance. If the, and you want if they um, want to get off the ledge and attack, say like Lucina Fair or something like that or Nair, you want to stay right outside of that so that you can also whiff punish that as well. And if they jump, something I like to do with Ryu because I can't you know I can't sure you can is I like to just jump up and I'll use like use like Nair preemptively because Nair has. Is, ex is actually a really big hitbox and has a really good amount of priority and it will it, because it comes out frame four it'll beat a lot of moves because you already have it out preemptively when they're there and look how long this move stays out like Nair, Nair stays out for 10 years in a day like this move stays out for so long 
and a special cancel. So like if you kick them, you can immediately like special cancel into Shaku and push him right back off stage, jump Shaku again, and you can combo him into fireballs to shove him off stage. And then they're right back to the ledge. So you efficiently want that's how you efficiently hold the ledge. You know? So that's pretty much how like Ryu's ledge play, play works and how it's slightly different than what Ken would normally do. So, moving on from that, um, another thing to talk about is how um, Ryu's pressure works, so and how his combo game works a little bit. So the thing is with Ryu, as we've already talked about, um, like his combo game is not as um, perplex as uh, Ken's is. Like Ken's uh, combo game is honestly like super, like it's like can go so many different ways, and he can put you in this vortex of pain. Ryu can't necessarily do that, but he can efficiently put you to the corner, which is what we want him to do. So some simple bread and butters from a nair, which is one of your like one of your big combo stars. You can go in nair, heavy jab, uh, heavy proximity jab into shock nets, which is good. You can always go like from that into like um, you can go into that. You know you can go into shoryu, you can go into tatsu, you know whatever you can go into like down tilt combos. There's a lot you can go into it. But after you go for a bread and butter, after what you want to do after you land a shock netsu on someone is really important because I want you to pay attention to um, Ken whenever he gets hit with a fireball. See that whole time he's kind of leaning back whenever he's on fire? He's in hit stun that entire time, right? So like with that in mind, like, like you see how much time I have to see that spike because of how much hit stun that has? That happens even on the ground too. So you can, whenever you land a Shokunetsu, it's a free stage patrol. You can dash forward for like as long as you want and possibly even hit him for it. See? Like, you can push forward so far, and this, and remember, you're getting a dumb bunch of damage every time you um, rack this up, so it's so easy for Ryu to rack up damage because of how much damage this does. But, um, just like with Ken, um, just knowing when to wait is, like, the best way to set up your resets and your pressure. Like, same thing with, like, I, I preached it before with Ken with his hard down tilt. When I hard down tilt someone, it sends them right at a distance I can kind of react to. So if I hard down tilt them, what I log, a lot of times what I'll do is I focus on, um, you know, what they're mashing out of hit stun, which is the most important thing for both Shotos to understand. Like if you master how to cover uh, your option, master your option coverage, and know how to cover what your opponent like most commonly mashes out of shield, like let's say um, nest mashing nair or, or jump fair or magnet out of hit stun. Like if you know how to like assist, like efficiently cover most of those options, it's super good. Because if you hard down tilt and you wait, this is honestly the, one of the best ones because they mash attack. Okay, you see the attack, you can dash in and whip punish it. They mash air dodge, same thing. Air dodge in, air dodge away, all of those can be covered if you just simply wait. And if they jump, your focus should be at that point to cut them off from center stage and focus on just boxing them back in the corner. Like I said, rising there if they want to jump over you, special cancel in the shaku, push them back to the corner. And you can set that up from hard down tilt. You can set it up from simple bread and butters, like even like out of shock and netsu, honestly. Like from this, I can just wait to see what they're gonna mash, because I I have the stage control. I can wait to see what they're gonna push out of hit stun, and then I can just react to it instead of having to read all this like that's the big thing is a lot of times when people are in uh, advantages shotos they feel the need that they have to push advantage super hard just because they got the hit whenever all you have to do simply is just hold stage control and then just focus on standing at a distance you can react to for what they're going to match because if there's two things that decide a match honestly there's percent lead and then there's stage control and in this game in particular stage control is the most vital thing even if you're at a percent deficit if you have the stage, if you have the, um, if you have stage control, you're winning. No matter if you're a stock down or not, if, as long as your uh, ledge trapping is efficient, you can find your stocks at the ledge every single time if you play correctly. If you just focus on acting second and focus on just you know finding the holes in what your opponent is doing, because a lot of times when people are disadvantaged, they play linearly. Even like they, they're going to get bodied. Then th this goes for both Shotos. I mean, this is just a general smash tip, of course, but for Shotos in particular, like if you know how to hold the, hold the corner, that's it. That's 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 how you find. That's how you become consistent, and you start winning tournaments, and you start winning sets. Is when you know how to control the corner, and you know how to efficiently like you know cover people's options when they mash out a hit stun. The three main options you got to focus on is jump, attack, and air dodge. So as long as you push them far enough away the to where they can't hit you. Like, even like with something like Shokunetsu because it pushes him away. Like, it, the distance I pushed him at, he either has to go off the, off the ledge or I'm just going to cover this area in particular with like Nair, Fair, Shock, another Sock, Shokunetsu or something like that, a slow version. If they jump over it, I can cover that with up air. You know, it's kind of the kind of things you want to be thinking about when you're pressuring your opponent. And you just, he just slowly boxes them off the corner. And that's that's how you, that's what Ryu does. That's, that's overall what Ryu does. 
Um, he doesn't have anything too flashy. The only thing that's really flashy about him is how strong his neutral is. His neutral is, is, is exceedingly stronger than Ken's in a lot of ways. And because he's so much slower than Ken, it really makes up for, you know, him having a good projectile. And it makes up for his slow speed. Plus, he's a, beef, he's a super heavy character who can just essentially tank so much damage, rack up to where he's got rage, and he can get, like, super early rage kills. Now, however, the one thing that's kind of annoying about the character is a lot of times at, like, higher percents, like, if you, like, go for, like, down tilt 2, well, right here it won't. Like, if your opponent's SDIing out or something like that, and they SDI out of down tilt 2, they'll, they'll fall out of down tilt 2 a lot. So what you want to essentially do whenever they fall out of this is you can go in the Tatsu, you can down tilt a couple times, dash forward again to continue pressuring them because if they're mashing uh, SDI away or something like that, you'll catch them every time because they're not ready to hold shield. And if they do hold shield, down tilt's pretty safe on shield as well and they take the risk of eating a uh, shield breaker setup, which I'll go into in a moment, um, which will definitely, you know, you know, eat their stock mad early. So that's kind of how you, how you make up for that as an issue. Um, so that's kind of how you kind of keep your pressure in that situation. You just like, again, you push him to the corner or you try to get the kill that way. But yeah, down tilt Tatsu starts killing around like higher percents, I think. Especially if you have Rage. It's a much higher percent. You have like 135 on a heavy character without DI. With Rage, it gets a little bit easier. So like Tatsu is always a solid tool to set up you know, your kills and stuff like that. Um, one thing to know about Ryu that no one uses yet, efficiently yet, is uh, he has Skid Nair combos which is, um, as you see here, when you get this little skid that King goes into right here, from that, you can actually combo into another Fastball Nair. See, like that, like I can actually just go for Nair, Nair, like Fastball Nair, Fastball Nair, into Rising Nair, into Tech Chase. I haven't done this to someone yet. Uh, I don't have a replay of it yet, but it is an option that you can do. But you can also go into Nair, into like, uh, Skid Nair into Down Air. You know, you can do stuff like that. And that can just, that can just turn into a whole lot of things. You can go, you can go like that, up tilt, go into Skid Nair into, uh, Skid Nair, Down Air, up tilt, up air, you know, up air into up, up air, sh or sure you, or something like that. Skid Nair is gonna be the big feature for this character's, um, this character's, like, you know, combo extenders, because it, it just sets up for so much. But a lot of people, when they land there, they want to do, like, dash down tilt, which is, like, suboptimal. When you can just do another landing aerial of some sort. But, yeah, they just put, I just want to put that in perspective. So that's something you can play around with a little bit. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, like, things you can do on shield. So with uh, Shaku Hover, there's a lot you can do. Like, Shaku Hover is just overall busted. Like, there's a good one right there. What I did there was Shaku hover hard down tilt uh, into uh, like Shoryuken, and that was a guaranteed guaranteed block string that you can land on someone's shield if they respect their shielding Shakunetsu, of course. There's the one right there. Um, if that was Nair, up tilt, hard up tilt, and to slow Shaku, because slow Shaku stays on shield longer and it breaks your shield. So yeah, that's, uh, that's a good one to go with as well. So that's a couple of shield breaker setups that could get you started. Another one that's really simple, that one right there. Just Nair into, uh, right into focus one, which is super good. If like you know they're they're mashing shield because a lot of people don't actually react to this. Um, of course, another one that's super simple is just that. Just I a lot of times this is my most common one. I'll just dash up down tilt into collarbone because if they're con if they're committed to holding shield, they're going to like continue doing it. And it's best to do it. I mean, like if, if they're going to commit to holding shield, they're not going to react to the first down tilt. Because Collarbone Breaker comes out, like, it's not, it has a good startup, but, like, a lot of times this will catch a lot of people off guard. Um, so, yeah, Collarbone Breaker is super, super useful out of a dash and just landing Nair on them. Like, something else you can do is if you think they're going to just hold shield, you can just literally just landing Nair, Collarbone Breaker. Always a good option. Like, Collarbone Breaker honestly will, like, get you so many stocks, because that move is easily, easily easily want to uh, reuse best tools if there is opponent is just holding shield way way too much um anyways 
So yeah, shield breakers, uh, holding advantage, ledge trapping, how to use Shokunetsu efficiently. So a lot of people, I get a lot of questions about, um, you know, just tech in general, um, whenever it comes to like Shaku hover. The best way to practice it guys, honestly, just to get in the lab and sit here and practice it. So you see the apex of my jump here. As soon as I get there, I'm already doing the half circle mo motion as soon. I have the half half circle, uh, half circle motion done as soon, like, as soon as I see like, white when I hit the apex of my jump. So as soon as I see that, I have my finger rolled and I'm hitting Shaku. But if you just time it a second, or like you slow yourself down when you're doing the half circle motion, you'll just start to slowly hit the ground. Like as soon as you start to descend, as soon as you start to descend, you input and in, you, in, you input it and you and you shock it. Okay, so this is the kind of the spacing for. It. As soon as I see myself start to descend, I get done with with the half circle motion and I hit A. So it looks like this. So it's jump, wait for a second. As soon as I see myself des descend, half circle motion A. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, like you need to set up stuff like that. Um, another thing that'll help, let's talk a little bit about edge guarding. So, can, Ryu can actually can do some pretty nifty stuff with his, uh, his Shokunetsu. Something I like to do is, like, if I down smash someone off the ledge, I'll throw out a slow one. Oh, whoops, whoops. Um, second, I gotta put him on control. I'll put, throw out a slow to try to get them to go low or go high, right? When you throw this out, it cuts them off from going at center, right? To come back to the stage. So, something you can do is if you space yourself correctly, you can walk forward a bit and fall in there. Like so, and you can like just get, and, you know get gimps that way. So how that works is like I said, you just get to the ledge, you jump straight up, and you drift forward a bit. Because if you um, dash and jump, you're gonna go way the hell out here. So you just short hop and you fall right here at the ledge. And if you gimp them or you trade, you can shock and hover again. I mean, uh, throw out shock it out so you can cancel it and then keep the pressure up. Another thing you can do is like run off Hadoken. If you uh, you know like when they're going to be grabbing the ledge or like going for that, like you can do that, grab ledge, back air. Um, super, super useful stuff. And that can just help again with a lot of characters like Falcon and stuff like that. It's super, super helpful. So those are a couple things you can do. But yeah, like in general, like if you're if you're like confident that you can catch your opponent off stage, just walk off Hadoken, grab ledge, and back air. Like, stuff like that is super, super useful. Like, if you can grab the ledge and, like, start saying a back air, super useful. Another thing you can do um, that's exclusive to Ken, uh, Ryu is you can sit and hover under the ledge. It won't work on Ken. You can hover, hover, hover under the ledge with Tatsu as well, and it'll, like, catch recoveries like Sonic up B, uh, Mega Man up B, and it'll knock him away and kill him at higher percents as well. So, yeah, there's some general tips for edge guarding as well. I think I pretty much covered all my bases. I'm going to go ahead and get the montage up. Uh, if you guys have any questions at all, please feel free to ask me any questions in the comments down below. If you guys really like this content, please consider hitting that bell icon, hitting the thumbs up, and subscribing. And of course, of course, if you would like to catch me on Twitch as well, it's the same handle as my YouTube channel, at RonanX1819. I stream Monday through Friday, all the time, so if you guys are interested in catching me sometime, make sure to stop by. Um, anyways guys, I'm going to get that montage for you. I'll see you next time.